This is Code.org, and we are tic-tac-toeing, updating the board. Let me zoop. The tic-tac-toe board has been created for us and contains events that will activate whenever the user clicks on the square game board. When this happens, we will need to update the game board to display X's arrows. Oh, does it not do that anymore? Nope, totally doesn't. Okay. Depending on the value of the turn variable. All right, one, begin the program by creating a conditional logic, don't let this scare you, an if statement by creating the conditional logic within update board. Okay, so I'm going to head to update board, cool, right here marked. Create a simple if condition. So I'm going to head over to control, right? Because they actually tried to help us with this color, right? This, men control, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab an if and drop it here. Create a simple if condition statement that checks the value of game over string variable. Ooh, that's a lot of words. Ah, but here's game over. So we have this variable named game over, and it's currently equal to the value false. Interesting that they say this is string because technically this is a boolean, but regardless, game over is equal to false. If true, if it was a string, guys, just to be clear, it would be in quotes. If true, then none of the code within update board should run. So if the condition statement that checks the value of game over string variable, if true. So we want to see if the game is over. So this variable tells us if the game is over. If this is set to be true, well, the game's over. So if this is true, we don't want anything to run. So first, I'm just going to say if game over, right? But we want to make sure that it is not true. And there are true a few ways to check for what's called negation in code and still be correct. So if I did if game over equals equals false, right? That would work, right? Because I want to make sure the game is not over before I allow any code to run that's going to be contained within this blue mouth thing. This statement, keep in mind, has to be true for the code inside of the if to run. So this would work. Now we have learned about the uh, explanation point or the negation operator, this. Now, keep in mind, what I just did with that explanation point right now is exactly to saying equals equals false. What I'm saying is if this is not true or if this is false, then, okay, all this uh, that will be nested within this, so inside of this, create a nested if, else, if, else. Now, they already said this is going to be nested in this. So that's a bit odd term, but I'm going to grab this, and that's what they're looking for. If the space text string variable is not empty, okay, so if it is not equal to this, all right? Now, we don't want to check it in that way. If space text string is not empty, then use show element. So I know the variable space text, and I want to make sure it's not empty equal. So remember, we use the negation operator here for not. So if I wanted to say, well, what if I wanted to know if it was equal? Well, that's how I would know if it was equal to nothing, right? This would be, hey, is space text variable, is this thing equal to that? If so, it would have to run the code right here. If not, it would have to keep going. So now I'm going to negate that. And now what this says in computer programming language speak is if space text is not empty, is not this. So as long as it's not this, it must run the code in the condition. And what are we going to do? Then you show element command dis to display try again label. Okay, UI controls. There should be a show element somewhere. Yep. And now try again label. I'm going to hit this little arrowy thing. And try again label. If you're wondering what that is, guys, we can always go into design and look to see if we can find what is actually uh, given that ID, right? I'm not seeing it right away, but that's how we would, oh, yes, I am right there. Well, maybe I can't click on it, but that's our try again. Okay, so if the space text does not equal empty, show the try again label. So as long as there's another turn, show try again. Okay, so that's now in our else if, notice I only have an else. I can go ahead and smack this little, well, tap it lightly. This one though, not the one beneath it. Bloop. And now I have an else if. Else if the turn variable is odd, set space text string 
variable equal to x. Okay, so if this number here is odd. That is going to be difficult, but there's a few ways we can do it. So else if turn um, over two. So I'm going to check for odd. I'm going to say if turn over. You could do a turn over two. We could do. So this way is actually going to get pretty hairy to do a straight up division in this way. What we can do, though, is go math and we can use the modulo operator. And so if turn modulo, guys, which is asking for a remainder, if turn modulo two equals equals zero. And what this says, modulo means if turn divided by two has no remainder. OK, so if turn when I divide it by two does not have a remainder, that means it must be an even number because all even even numbers can be evenly divided into two. If it does have a remainder when divided by two, again, this says turn when divided by two has no remainder. Ten, turn modulo two. Uh, and so what am I checking? Turn variable is odd. Ah, so if it has the remainder of one, then it would be odd. I'm going to use the command show element display player to turn. So UI controls. Show element. I just copied and player two. There you go. Cool. Else, if the space text string variable equals equals to, oh, wait. Oh, I also have to do this. Okay. So I have to set the space text string variable. Okay. Let me head to variables. So now I'm going to change space text to be equal to X and I'm going to add one to turn and I can do that by saying turn is going to be equal to whatever turn used to be equal to plus one, right? This way I say, hey, computer, turn has a new value. What is turns new value? It's turns old value, but add one to that. A fancy way to do this which is the exact same thing is to write turn plus plus. Just keep that in mind. I'm going to do it this way. I think it's more readable, but this would be identical to that. Okay, now my else set space text. So at this point, we know it's not an odd turn and the game is not over. And so we know the game's not over. We know the space text's not blank, but it's also not X's turn. So now we change the space text to O. And make sure to put quotes since it's a string. Add one to turn. So I'm going to do the same thing here and I'm just going to for speed copy and paste. Add one to turn. And use hide element command to hide player to turn label. There we are. I'm going to hide the player to turn label, which would be showing if this was last. And you show element player one. Oh, hide player one here. OK, this is making sense. And so up here, I needed to hide player one and then show player two. So actually, just to make my point, guys, I'll go ahead and again, this is identical to this. So I'll do that rep, that method here. They're the same. All right, check out. Sometimes it's easier to work. Oh, text mode. Yeah, that might be easy. Okay, let me go ahead and see if I broke something. Yeah, so notice that it is going back and forth. Our text isn't updating correctly yet. If you noticed, our game starts with O right now. And that's because the instructions ask for when the turn is an odd number, uh, when X is, when turn is odd for it to be X's turn. Well, we start at zero. Zero is not an odd number. So my else if here, my conditional turn zero modulus two or zero divided by two, what's the remainder of zero divided by two? The remainder is zero. Well, that's not equal to one. Therefore, it is O's turn. So we could have a few ways we could modify this. We could actually change this text to say O goes first, or we could just modify that and have turn start at one. It's kind of up to you how you want to format that. 
but we did follow the instructions. That being said, we are looking good thus far. Onward.